Hey kids, you're listening to the internet's wettest podcast about video games, consoles, and pancakes. The SML Podcast. What's up, everybody? This is the SML Podcast. I am your host, Joe. It is a party cast. We've got Tim, Brooke, Chris, and Purnell here. How is everybody mm-hmm. doing? Pretty good. Mm-hmm. Man, it's so roomy in here compared to last week. Holy shit. Oh, my goodness. I can breathe. <laughs> I can hear myself think. It only took Joe That's one try. You're on speaker phone, Purnell. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. yeah. Very nice. <laughs> That, that would be why I can hear myself think, isn't it? Wouldn't yeah, love it. Love it. So, Tim, we had our, our wrestling oh weekend. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> Ooh, how did that go? It went well, it started out awful. great. <laughs> no, no. Let's, it started off of amazing. It we're great. Yeah. Yeah. Two thirds of it were great. And then it ended on a sour note and then a sour were note, I guess. Yeah. Last night. But I wasn't. It was, I had was already so drifted nice. away at that point. <laughs> the the uh, that that exact sentiment was so prevalent that even I heard about it before yeah. you or Joe mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Ring of Honor was amazing. Out. Wait, did you hear? Did you hear about any of the good stuff that happened? I mean, not did any details. of that reachers. No, no, yeah, but I I don't know. Did vibes come your way? Yeah, yeah. People were okay. very excited at first. Okay, all right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, just, Ring of Honor was, was great. GCW yes. was pretty good. <laughs> That was a fun event. Uh, first night of WrestleMania was awesome. And then night two of WrestleMania happened and everything went to shit. Well, it, it, let's face it. It was, <laughs> it was bad. And then like it was fine. And then it was b- b- heartbreaking again yeah. at the end <laughs> and, and frustrating and aggravating in all the ways that WWE always has been for the last 20 years. Also, Vince um, McMahon is back and, yeah, and then, no one then is just happy. escalated the next day. And uh, and they sold to the company that owns UFC. What the they are f- merging with the company that owns. Well, they're being merged with UFC. I guess. Yeah. What? The, like, they, are they going to mix the two sports now? That would be amazing. No, but the, their goal is to triple the valuation of WWE in like seven years or something ridiculous like that, like they did with UFC. So who knows how that's going to go. Well, they're losing a lot of people already. So. Are they, though? Hey, last Maybe. night's Raw had the highest ratings since before the pandemic. So That's you tell true. me, Joe. That is true. Makes you <laughs> wonder if people it. tuned in for the shit show or if it was legitimate interest in the product again. The and shit show or the legit show. Uh, <laughs> I personally am can't wait nice. for tomorrow night to get back on the track AEW with, train. Yes, yes, with with the wrestling that with I enjoy. Bonbons galore. Bonbons galore. What have they yeah. announced for it tomorrow? Is that a name a of lot. a wrestler? Is there a wrestler named Bonbons galore? That that would be a great wrestler name. Probably. I, mean, I agree. I mean, I want this wrestler to exist. I want Bonbons galore. <laughs> I, I could read down the card if I could find it, but just I assure you that it's good. Sammy and uh, who was it? Sammy and Commander? Yeah, and Co- Commander. Commander. Yes. Well, Jamie oh Hader and Riho, Hook and Ethan Page, the Guns and FTR, oh, House of Black, man. and the Orc against Best Friends. Oh. So yeah, it's a, it's a juicy show. It's it's a very juicy show for us. We uh, need to, to get the rest of you into watching AEW. No, no, it, so it, I mean, it doesn't <laughs> have it doesn't have Jake the Snake Roberts and uh, it does actually like, AW has Jake it the does, Snake yeah. Roberts. <laughs> Wait, the, is he? What do you mean he does? Isn't he done? Jake the Snake he doesn't Roberts. Wrestle. I he was, he's he's a man. He's in yeah. a mentor role. Yeah, but he's he that's, shows up every. That's now just now funny then. as shit that the one person you specifically name drop yeah. is there. No, I need Still a show engaged. with Jake the Snake Roberts. Got you, fam. Yeah. It's this one. Like, yeah, well, what about Sting? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you, bro. Stay what about the about Hardy the Boys? Hmm? Well, his what? third incarnation is still in it. Fucking what about it. what? What about the Bushwhackers? Oh, never oh, mind. No, Bushwhacker. <laughs> yeah, just the one. 
Those are the, like the two. Those two guys were so goofy. Like I actually do remember them from watching wrestling when I was a kid. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, before they went to WWE, they were like super serious. Yeah. The evil sheep herders. Yeah. <laughs> Which fantastic like brand to sell. Love it. <laughs> so how was everyone else's weekend that didn't watch wrestling? You know, I it was hard because I used to love wrestling, but after my ex husband Hayabusa passed away, uh, <laughs> it just wasn't the same, and I just couldn't couldn't watch it anymore. Uh, he was the love of my life. He was uh-huh. everything to me. So it was everything. <laughs> Whereas now I'm like Hayabusa. I know you were related to you married to were you Hayabusa, so your name isn't Brooke Hayabusa. Not anymore. You know, <laughs> it's too anymore. painful to keep the name after after that's understandable you know, love of my life passed away but i'll always i'll always remember the good times he, you know they took him from us too young so what did you do brooke <laughs> what was your weekend like i actually watched a wrestling show it was an indie wrestling show in uh Which one? austin uh it's you know pwr split up that's the uh wrestling group luigi primo and stuff is from uh, uh-huh. and now some of those members have become fight opera and a couple of my friends fight were participating opera. And it was really cool. It was really funny. Uh, The premise of the show was, hey, you know, we have a giant 12 foot skeleton and he's really sad because since he's a skeleton, he doesn't have any lungs or like skin or blood or anything. And because of that, he's never been able to do drugs. So tonight we're having a blood drive for the skeleton. If we can hit the top. Um, wow. <laughs> and this skeleton is going to finally smoke weed for the first time or do ibuprofen or whatever. And it was just really well written. It was so funny. Uh, and no spoilers. As I was just chilling on Twitch. Pop a pill? Let me tell yeah. you something. <laughs> he was so excited. Uh, I was full of heartwarming moments, twists and turns. Uh, but yeah, it was cool to see my friends getting back out there. Just a couple of my friends and a lot of people that I don't know uh, getting back into that scene. Because that, that, you know, that group was really taking off. And then the pandemic hit. And it's pretty rough for some, uh, you know, popular backyard wrestling in Austin, Texas. Uh, but I love the whole vibe. I love that, like... It was called Sacrifest. There's lots of like blood uh, jokes, and I don't know. Next time one of those time. events is going on, you've got to let me know because I want to. I watch will. That. I will for sure if you're interested. There should be another one coming up soon. This is their second show. Uh, yeah, and they didn't always stream on Twitch, but that's another thing that perhaps the pandemic is uh, changing for the better. So I used to be able to not watch these because I'm hundreds of miles away from my bros in uh, in Texas now, but now I can. So I can confirm. Fun. <laughs> it's very sad. We got blood. We Chris, got what jokes. was your weekend like? Uh, how's, how's the streaming going? Oh, how how did the yeah? Did you get yeah, you, the held, top you beat a game while you held a kitty. Is that right? Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. That was um that was last week, but that's okay. I I could talk about that. <laughs> so in the top one hundred list, I uh number twenty is of course like I mentioned Mega Man, the first Mega Man. The only Mega Man on the list besides M- uh, Mega Man X, which is weird. That's its that own conversation. Just, yeah, it doesn't make like any sense. Of... It, it is. Yeah, it's. I feel like they missed contentious. a couple. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, I was um, I, I played it and I was like, well, I'm pretty good at this game, so I'm just going to beat it. And then I'm going to immediately start Super Mario RPG, which is number 21. Um, so in my my 45 to 50-ish minute uh, Mega Man 1 playthrough, uh, Cricket kept getting in my way, and she does not understand that the keyboard is something I don't want her walking on, so she just immediately (laughs) hops up on the keyboard, like, when she's on my desk. Like, she does not avoid it at all. She, like, puts her paws on. That's why I have the pull-out tray with my keyboard. Yeah, she just, she likes to put her paws on the keyboard, and that's not good for when you're streaming. (laughs) So, eventually, just to, you know just to make her happy but also not have her not be in my way i just put her in my arms and just kept playing and i uh from the second robot master till the end of the game i had cricket in my arms <laughs> while I was playing Hard mode. and i uh yeah i did it well and i did it glitchless too so i beat the yellow uh, i posted on twitter awesome. that i beat the yellow devil uh with no uh no trickery and with a cat in my arms so cool that's classic yeah. See, I want to applaud that, but it's such a boring fight that you have to use the glitch. Yeah, Otherwise, I mean, it's you don't have to. It just jump, sucks. Jump, jump, jump. It's, shoot. Well, it, Daddy Mac will make you. What is, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, what it is is that, like, what's exciting about it is the fact that it is kind of a battle of attrition, but there's no E-Tanks in original Mega Man, so you only have the life bar you go into that fight with, yeah. and you can only do so much damage to the Yellow Devil per turn, so it's kind of like, you know, you you have to dodge that thing so many times, and it's an inevitability that you're gonna get hit, so, you know, it's kind of like, you can dodge mm-hmm. it all day, and you kind of have to, and that's what makes it, like, such a... Uh, legendarily difficult fight because a lot. Of and people... I still feel like copy Mega Man, oddly enough, is harder unless you glitch him. Which which one? Then again, copy Mega Man. Though I wouldn't be surprised if you're about to tell oh. me actually if you use oh, this there's... weapon, he's a joke. There there is a weapon where he's a joke. Uh, which weapon is it? It's it's okay. So <laughs> I may have to highlight this on uh, on Twitch as well because I did it. Uh, it's the fireball from Fireman stage. So the fireball uh, produces a very short shield around Mega Man that will do continuous damage. And because of the way that you can manipulate uh, clone Mega Man's movements, you can do this thing where you don't shoot the fireball at him, but you shoot it and then jump backwards towards him. He tries to walk under you and then he gets hit and then backs away. And then you just repeat that and you just keep jumping into him and then oh, wow. he just goes down. Yeah, it's real easy. Um, but. All the other ones are real hard. <laughs> yeah, I had to cheese the hell out of copy Mega Man. I didn't even realize that thing was a possibility. Yeah. I First, I thought you said actually. coffee Mega Man, and I was really confused. I oh, yeah, that motherfucker's Mega. hyper. Um, <laughs> the Guts Man look. The Guts Man costume looks like coffee Mega Man because it's brown, and then like there's kind of a beige. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So what uh, else, what else did you w? tackle on your list? Uh, I'm just in the middle of Mario RPG right now, but... Uh-huh. um which was 21, and then after that's Castlevania. And uh, also, on April Fool's Day, as is tradition, I played really, really bad games. Uh, this time <laughs> I played bad movie games from the 90s, and I just did a whole list of them. I, uh, I almost beat Home Alone, and I almost beat Cliffhanger on the NES. Awesome. But I, I love that you're even it. playing Home Alone. That's amazing. Yeah, Home Alone is a trip on the, uh, on the NES. <laughs> Mid Culkin proud. Yeah. Yo, McCulkin loves to jam and Earl. By the way, I think I've already said that like six times in the show. Uh, yes, uh, he's so cool. All right, just throwing that out there again. Yeah, he uh, he's a uh, um, listed as a producer on the um, soundtrack to the new game, uh, not the soundtrack, the credits to the new game, That's because awesome. uh, after their very successful Kickstarter campaign, <laughs> which I uh, which I donate, uh, which I, I applied a lot of money to that, um, I ended up with a lot of swag. But anyways, nice. he uh, like after the successful campaign, he actually swooped in and gave him a bunch of money and got a producer credit as well. I have a question for you. What sure. what bad movie video games did you play? Just give us a small listing of them. He said that. Oh, I missed that. I I, I, I gave a small list, but I got the I got the list right get here. That, get out that big Unroll list. the scroll. Oh, yeah. All right, because all I heard all I heard I was the Home Alone one. So tell Crier, I declare I played through the following. <laughs> yes, here you go. There you go. There you go. All right, all right. Here's what I played. Uh, I played. Um, hang on. What's the first one? Of course, I had to start with Total Recall on the NES. It's the uh, <laughs> that's the legend. Where Arnold fights exclusively guys who are as tall as his knee, <laughs> just like in the movie. <laughs> and uh, I played Cliffhanger, like I said, on the NES with Sylvester Stallone, which is just a wildly uh, in- inappropriately cheap, like bad looking game for its year. It was like a 1993 <laughs> NES game that looked like an Atari game. Anyway, oh jeez. Yeah, you should check it out sometime. It can also be beaten in seven minutes if you know what you're doing. I didn't know God. what I was doing, so. Oh, wow. How long did it take you to beat it? I didn't beat it. <laughs> oh. I got well, to the last be stage. Bad, you'll beat it. I got to the last stage and got a perma game over, so I would have had to start the whole game over again, and I was just like, I got to move on from this. So <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I played Dirty Harry on the NES. Why they made an NES game after a movie from 1971 starring Clint Eastwood, <laughs> I don't know, but it's I mean, bad. That doesn't sound terrible. It is, oh, though. That <laughs> hurts my feelings. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Was it at least a light gun game? <laughs> no. Uh, you do have a gun, and you can you can pull out your gun and just run with it, like, straight out in front of you, even though you're only, like, you know, like like you would do in, like, some crappy, like, 3D game, but it's a 2D game. Here, I'm um, going to derail this for a second. How many light gun games are 
there for the NES. Like, oh, there's what? there's like a maybe Duck about Hunt, ten. Hogan's three? Alley. Yeah, I was gonna say about ten. Gotcha. Yeah, to the Earth. Gumshoe. Gumshoe. Yeah. <laughs> the Adventures uh, of Bayou Billy. Really? Partially, a, partially part of it. Yeah. Partially, yeah. <laughs> also, the Lone Ranger on the NES, partially a light Ooh. gun game, <laughs> if you want it to be. Uh, there's Trick to shooting. the Earth, like I said. Operation Wolf can be a light. I think it is a light gun game. Um, yeah. There's there's a few. <laughs> um. Anyways. Oh, and uh, 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 what's that baby game? Oh God. Hang on. I think it's Baby Boomers. <laughs> well, that sounds <laughs> terrible oh. in and of itself, but. <laughs> As a color dreams game, uh, baby boomer. But, yeah, baby boomer. It's a it's a uh, color dreams game. So it's it's you know it's bad. That's the Bible adventures people. Oh no! And uh, yeah, you would use the NES zapper to shoot things before they reach the baby. So the baby would just crawl, and you basically had to blow up the entire world to accommodate its chaotic. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like a baby. Okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> not their worst game. <laughs> I uh I can I can tell you it's not one of their words. Anyways, okay, so back to the list. Um so then I played uh, Home Alone on the NES. Um and then I think I played one more NES game. Oh, I I kind of messed around with a uh with um <clears throat> sorry. Uh with the t- the first Terminator game on the NES, but it wasn't that bad, so I kind of was like, this is it was a suggestion from the chat, so I was like, well, this isn't very bad though, but you know, it's not good either. So then I moved on to uh, Super Nintendo where I played uh The Rocketeer, which is a horrible game. It's good on the oh. NES. <laughs> it's good on the <laughs> NES. It's bad. bad great music. On- yeah, super. Yeah, yeah. On the NES, it's great. I actually did play a little bit of it on the NES because I've mistakenly written down NES instead of SNES. On the SNES, it's it's just awful, <laughs> and uh, hmm, weird in, in ways that are hard to describe. So I won't. Hey, uh, then I played Time Cop on the SNES, oh, which God. looks great but is not. Uh, I played Terminator 2 Judgment Day on SNES and figured out how to actually get out of the first level, which I'd never known how to do before. <laughs> so, <laughs> congrats. Hooray. Yeah, um, that one was... I'm, I'm like down a Wikipedia rabbit hole now of just looking at stupid-ass controllers for the Super Nintendo, and oh, I'm sweet. looking at the batter-up controller so right now. Nice, yeah. A that, fucking never light s- controller? It's a it's fucking foam bat. Yeah, I've I've Baseball seen bat. pictures, oh, but okay. I've never I've never seen one in real life. <laughs> um, most of these I have seen in real life, like the uh, <laughs> the menacer and things like that. Uh, anyways, was it the menacer? What's the one where like the uh, it was like you wore a thing and then like stood like on the like near this thing that like kind of was supposed to track your movements and you would do like punches and kicks and stuff oh god i know what you're talking about it was like an octagon on the ground yeah i think it was called let me see the menacer is a gun so that that's wrong um no i don't remember it was on the sega genesis though i remember like the ads um showing this guy like this athletic guy like perfectly doing a kick and then it shows like eternal champions and i'm like you can't even play eternal champions with a real controller <laughs> much less anyways the sega activator thank you i knew it was a er <laughs> anyway okay so uh then i moved on to like genesis and sega cd uh the star of the show there was bram stoker's dracula on sega cd uh i accidentally booted it up on genesis first and it turns out it's great on genesis <laughs> Uh, it's also good on NES, but the Sega CD version is ridiculous crap. It's amazing. I'm uh, surprised it, you didn't go through any whoa. of the Disney games. Well, they're not bad. Yeah, no, those Disney, Disney games, games back then were good. The only exception, I think, it, well, it, that would be a TV show, but I was going to say Tailspin was kind of bad. But I mean, one, Tailspin. One of the Aladdins wasn't particularly good because in one of them, he didn't have a weapon. And I don't know. Uh, they were all was. good cartoons. Well, he actually doesn't games. have weapon the Super the Nintendo games. version, which is the better version. Ugh. I I you didn't know? I was yeah, I didn't play much of the Super Nintendo version as a kid. I did beat the Genesis version on hard and it was so bad. I like I remember that. It's like a core memory because of how difficult it was. And um, there's the Lion game. King. Yeah, I didn't know it was really hard. Uh, so anyway, I am uh, <laughs> looking at gameplay of the Rocketeer on NES, uh, where <laughs> you know it looks like there's a lot of like you know r- 
side scrolling, running and jumping. Yeah. Uh, and you and you punch guys, but the way this guy's playing, like he's walking up to guys, ducking and punching them in the dick. Which okay, so just kind of looks like enough. he's running up, ducking down and jerking these guys off, like just straight yes. up. Just <laughs> <laughs> that's like, the good. That's the good one, Tim. You should see. Oh yeah. Now look oh, at the I, Super Nintendo one. Oh, I just reviewed the Super Nintendo version. Uh, the only good part of the Super Nintendo version is when you do the, the plane race as the Rocketeer and you just zip past everybody. And then the rest of the game is amazing. Well, not amazing trash. It's just bad. I remember <laughs> yeah. renting the Rocketeer for Super Nintendo yeah, and I had too. no clue what the fuck was happening. Yeah. It just yeah. went right back to Zelda. It's it's not good. No. But in... I got, to, I got to level four, which was like the first real boss of the game. And I was like, nah, screw this. It takes way too long to even get to this boss because it's just so hard to do the the uh, it, it, so the Rocketeer on Super Nintendo alternates between this really whack ass like airplane racing game mm-hmm. and and a gallery shooter where mm-hmm. you, you can only use the controller and badly. And there's and, scrolling shooting like oh, there's the a shmup style. Shooting. Yeah. Okay. Later on after yeah, you didn't get far enough to, the, to do this. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's like sh- shmup style shooting. And then, like, when you get to the Zep one at the end, there's, like, side-scrolling beat up The game is all over the fucking place. Well, I mean, I don't know. Like, it it sucked when I played it. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm not. I am not uh, evangelizing it here. <laughs> uh, then the, um, let's see. I, so, just to wrap it up, I, uh, I eventually landed on the N64. And the two games that I played on it, because they're the only two movie-based games that I know were, like, bad... Uh, was the Rugrats in Paris, which is a depressing little game, <laughs> if there ever was one. Why uh, so? So you pick one of the children from the from the show, the very popular Rugrat mm-hmm. show, and then one character that I guess is just in the movie, because I don't remember her from the show. And then you just wander around this theme park all alone, just you, none of the other children, none of the NPCs. There are no NPCs or anything. You just collect tickets. And then you play mini games one at a time. You have to like beat one to access any others. And it's all just to unlock collectibles. And the collectibles are like in a real theme park, extremely expensive. Uh. So it's literally running one little baby around an empty, lifeless like amusement park and then trying to win at the batting cage. Or it's like a it's a throwing that does sound balls. depressing. Yeah, yeah, it's throwing balls at targets. Type of carnival thing. games before carnival games existed. <laughs> yeah, except somehow even more depressing. <laughs> um, <sighs> you kind of it's it's the game that makes you wish the carnies would show up. Uh, anyways, after that, I finished everything off with the um, it was kind of cheating because the game came out in 2000, but the movie came out in 1998. So I, I counted it and it was Blues Brothers 2000 on the N64, mm. which, oh, uh, oh man. Uh, I, I hated it. Doesn't and, sound like uh, a good one. No, and you'd think even the music would be good, but it was like it was like an instrumental. It was a loop of the first half of the first verse of "Respect" by Aretha Franklin, which isn't in the film. Um, well, it might have been in this in two thousand. I don't know. I didn't watch that crap. No one um, did. I mean, I did. My once. dad did. I don't know why. Yeah, my, my dad watched weird. it and I watched it, too, a little bit. And I don't remember anything about that one. I like I like the original one. Uh, but anyways, yeah, it's just like the first half of the first verse of that just looped infinitely. And it's you're just going around a jail, like trying to find musical notes. And just it's just like it's just a bizarre 3D, like collectathon type game. But it's it's not fun. That sounds amazingly boring for such a good movie. <laughs> Yeah, respect is on that well, soundtrack. Oh, okay. Well, 2000. there you go. Um, in two thousand, you like you like Blues Brothers two thousand, Aki. If it's the, I I like the movie. Whatever the. There's two the movie Blues Brothers there. movies. There's yeah. Blues Brothers, then there's Blues Brothers two thousand that has a kid in it, and that one sucks. Yeah, Blues Brothers two thousand because Jim Belushi had died. A uh, John Belushi, sorry. Oh, then uh, I like the original then. <laughs> Yeah, the original had John Belushi, and it ruled. Uh, that's the one that has the Illinois Nazis and stuff. Uh, and James Brown, like, and is is great. Uh, the 2001, they replaced John Belushi with uh, John Goodman, and they brought in two other characters, one of which was a kid. And it was just like, yeah, it was just this this children aren't needed in 
movie. What the hell? No. John Goodman was a good replacement, though. I love yeah, John, John Goodman. Goodman. That's fine. Yeah, he's good, but it, he couldn't save the movie. <laughs> no, nothing could. Uh, Pernell, what was your weekend like? Oh, my weekend was pretty decent. I met a guy to purchase a used board game off of him and then learned that he was looking for people to play games with, which is why he was selling all this stuff. So I dragged him into my King of Prussia board game group. So now we have a new member. Nice. Um, in addition to that, I did probably my best workout since pre-COVID, where I ended up in the red. My heart rate got to 98% max, so it was like going at maybe like oh. 100. And like It was ridiculous. Um, like it's, hard, it's rare that I do a workout, and I get to the point where I fall on the ground, and I can't get back up for a few minutes, and that's what oh, happened. That's so I thought good. I was like, well, I, oh, I pushed myself really hard. So, um, no, don't push yourself like, my too hard. To come back thing. A little too, but in the end, it was still worth it. Like, I got what I wanted out of it. So now my You're goal is to keep doing that. You're going to give yourself a heart attack doing that. Don't do that. Well, I know how, to, I know how to stop it. I bring it back down. That's the important part. Yeah, it sounds um, like you bring it back down by collapsing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's not how you're I don't fall do backwards. I sit down and lie down. That's like technique to get your heart rate down. I don't fall down. Um, I just gently lay down. I like well. That's literally it. You lie down. I just and let your heart- lay down and chase the light. Chase, stare at the <laughs> ceiling, and go. Whoo, that was rough. But um, I did that. Did the other thing. Um, I of course played my review games. I decided I'm going to try to run a 5K because I saw a sign at the Brew Works when I went to get beer for a knock. And I'm in. What was it? I guess what I guess what was the word I'm looking for? Um, it's the opposite of inauguration day, but in like. I don't know. The word basically the fuck out. Oh, indictment over. day. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I was I was having some really bad English moments there. Indictment day. Yes, I went and got a <laughs> beer for indictment day and I drank it and it felt good. Um nice, and nice. then I got another beer today because today was arraignment day. So I kind of <laughs> followed up with a part two to that bad boy. Um and I also got picked up two gains at the at the last minute for that buy one get one fifty percent off sale at Target because of course I'm still buying Switch titles for some reason. What'd you grab? Uh I bought the Dragon Quest Treasures game and then nice. you'll be happy with the second game I bought because it was actually for the Xbox. It was a Steel Rising that kind of mecha souls like game. Nice. Mm. Good choice. So, That's a good game. Thanks. I'm glad to hear. So that means I don't have to be afraid of it coming up. Like I hope I made a right to made the right decision. No, I made a good decision, according to. Let's be real. You're never gonna play it. Yeah. How I, about I, I will? You that never game. know. I really enjoy. It. Now, if you were to say you won't finish the game, you had every I right to it. say that. Because, <laughs> no, 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 no. no I, I'm not saying me. Yeah. I oh. probably won't. I'm okay with acknowledging that. But oh, these prob- days, you actually playing game is easy. Will because there's a lot of accessibility options in it that actually make it very, very easy. To be, including one that just says you can't take damage. <laughs> Guess how I play <laughs> easy mode. <laughs> yes. Taking a By the way, Pernell, <laughs> I, I, it- I love how weeks ago you said you were done buying board games, and every week you're talking about new board games you're getting. Because <laughs> now I get so, now it's come to getting them addict. used. <laughs> and so also, well, that, hmm? oh, when he visited me, I cheated him out because I was like, "You need to be collecting board games, dude. Even if you can't play, you gotta keep it up." And then I gestured <laughs> around at all my board games I bought that I haven't played with anyone yet, and I was like, "You can't Rook leave me alone." Gestures here, broadly. <laughs> <laughs> There's no shame for now. Board game you have riches. a bunny, you can play them now. That's Just right. With the bun bun. <laughs> I think the bunny will play them in a way she doesn't want as board game God. pieces are consumed. <laughs> they pooped out. Hey, at um, least somebody's having a good time. Risk it. Stop true. eating the cards. <laughs> well, how, I can't stay Risk it. Stop you eating the money. Push. Oh my God. Every time <laughs> Risk you it. Stop eating I'm the board. Like, God damn it. <laughs> I love him so much. He'll like destroy like, something and I'll be like, oh my God, why did you do that? I love you so much. Kiss, 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 kiss. And Aunt Carrie's like, stop kissing him. What's every time fuck, he eats what's something. His name again? His name is Brisket, technically, Brisket. but I call him Baby Bread every day. I'm just settling it. Baby Bread. I love Baby that. Bread. He's just a little bread, oh, man. Oh, well, Speaking if that's of the board case, games and uh, also great. Uh, I was going to say, asking for a name for a big brother or a little brother, I got to think of something different now if it's if you're not going with oh, Brisket. Yeah. I was asking Joe, I was like, what if I got him a big brother one day? What would his name be if I got him a dog brother or like someday far in the future? And I was thinking like beef ribs. What did you say, Joe? Pot you roast. A good one. Oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> pot roast. Very, Very nice. Bring it home. Bring Brisket it home. and pot roast. 
So cute. This fall on the CW. <laughs> <laughs> what so were you going to say, Pernell? Buy, I was going to say I did end up buying one other title, but that was for a good reason, which is that when I went to visit Brooke, I ended up playing a game there, and I described what happened when I played it last on the last episode or two. And I was like, you know what? I can get this for dirt cheap, and I can actually have it as like a kind of a memory of the visit, and I can actually play the game with my wits about me and see if I do any better. So <laughs> I ended up buying that Hansa Teutonica for pretty cheap on Amazon. I got a good deal on it. Um, so now, like I told the guy that I was visiting her with, I was like, hey, I got that game. He's like, that's great, because I want to try it again, because he liked it, too. <laughs> um, so it is going to happen. Hansa Teutonica is in the house. And it is glorious. No, you mentioned you were. The... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say you mentioned you were playing review games. We could get to those because we've Ooh. been chatting for a while. <laughs> that is true. But should we hey, should we dive into these? We got a couple to go. Like this. We, we well, I will let y'all get to it. Have a good stream. I, I don't even know why you're here, Aki. I hadn't like when I did you show up on the chat with us? It's I didn't like, think I even introduced you. Like when did you show up? Oh, I I showed up while uh. He was talking about the bad <laughs> movie games he was playing because <laughs> I didn't. Fine. I didn't hear the list of it, so I wanted to come in specifically to ask for that list. <laughs> nice. Oh Lord. I'm glad you Bye, did. Bye, Brooke. Bye, Rocky. <laughs> See y'all later. See ya. Catch you later. All right, let's get to these. First game to talk about tonight is a preview of Axolotl, developed by Two Awesome Studio, published by Playstack, releasing soon on PC and console. The cutest, deadliest, and only top-down roguelike shooter feel featuring an AK-wielding Axolotl. Blast your way through the animal kingdom with your arsenal of kick-ass guns, mighty power-ups, and even raise an army of trigger-happy baby axolotls. Brooke and Purnell, you both checked this one out. What did the two of you think? We played Rock, Paper, Scissors earlier, and we decided I would go first. So let me take it <laughs> from the top. Uh, we open up up on a peaceful, lush, bright green forest. We're a little axolotl, and we can move around what appears to be a base camp. We start out holding an AK gun or whatever they're called. I wouldn't know. I'm really more of a lover than a fighter. <laughs> yeah, a pixel art. <laughs> Pixel art is just really adorable and colorful and charming. Peaceful guitar music is strumming in the background around the fire pit central camp with a bubbling purple cauldron are two shops with some animated sprites running them. We can hit E to interact with the shops and we see that they accept this currency that looks like a bone or a dog biscuit or something. We've got three of it. Not enough to really buy anything yet, but it's good to have some walking around money. One shop is called the Small Paws Dealer. It's run by what looks to be a cute street cat, uh, the other shop. I don't know if it actually is a shop. It's called the Dropping Doggo, and it appears to just be some dog with sunglasses posted up next to two vending machines that also sells weapons and stuff. <laughs> other than the two shops, we've got a council of mysterious monkeys we can't really interact with much yet. A target range so we can practice shooting with our trusty AK and some other stuff we can't access yet behind fences and junk, leading me to assume we're going to be coming back to the space area throughout the game. Walking around, you quickly run out of things to do here and you have to go through a big honking gate to progress. On the walkway to this gate, we have a few other weapons we can swap out if we don't want the AK. Some of them could be melee items like an axe. Uh, but now we're through the gate and we're deeper in the forest. And shit just got real. We're still in the lush, beautiful forest, but the, pace, the peaceful music has been replaced by metal. The creatures of the forest are trying to kill us. What? Well, we started with a gun, but we had no idea this was going to happen. Confusion engulfs us, but there's no time to ask a lot of questions because now it's do or die. <laughs> that was fun. I was like, get ready for now. It's going to be bad. Anyway, we use WASD <laughs> to run around for our life. We use left click to shoot spaces dash. Q special ability if your weapon has one. And it's kill or be killed out here in these streets uh, or peaceful woods. When you kill a mousy, a little lizard, a gator or whatever that is, or a bunny... Drew a sad base in my notes. Even a sweet worm that looks like a, a little wormple. Little gold triangles are left behind for you to collect uh, if you can get them to before they disappear. If you're ruthless enough to kill all the creatures of the forest so that you may live and you manage to clear the forest room, I want to call it, of all the enemies, each one cuter than the last, which is always hard, a treasure chest will drop that you can open by pressing E to interact, offering you the option to switch out with yet another weapon. Maybe this could sometimes be an item, another item too, but I don't know. Uh, now you can exit the room. I've died a lot in this game. I haven't made it very far past the first room, <laughs> mostly because of my lack of experience with this type of game. There's a steep learning curve for me here. 
But I did notice I had three exits to choose from. One had an icon with a gun over the top. The other had an icon that I can't remember. The other one had a cookie. I went through the cookie one. Obviously, uh, I'm not like stupid. So <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what made it a cookie level. I'm about to ask Purnell because I died. There were three ranged enemies uh, on this kind of little forest island surrounded by some cute streams or, if you will, a brook. Uh, now let's all have a peaceful moment of silence for all the cute bunnies that I killed in order to continue with my own life, which I still don't feel great about. TBH. Uh, we'll hand it over to Fennell. How are you feeling about this one? Well, I will say in your defense, I mean, they were it was you or them. It's, it was, it was me or them. Kill or be killed. And those and rabbits I, didn't have the will, the drive, you, the passion. This so. is the sin, doctor. Yes, man, shit I need. Thank you, man. I do appreciate <laughs> that you asked for a moment of silence and then didn't have a moment of silence that's right yeah, those rabbits didn't deserve it. You, <laughs> you, you bring you bring the grenades you get the ak that's how this game works <laughs> um so i honestly kind of enjoyed the idea of the fact that i mean obviously it's a demo so who knows if this isn't something that you have to build up over time but the fact that you can choose from an arsenal of like from starter guns before you go into the dungeon proper because Sometimes when you kill enemies, they will drop a firearm that you can pick up to work as a sub weapon, mm, but you can only ever have two guns. So if you have a particularly favorite gun that you like and you've unlocked that gun, well, then that means all you got to really worry about is choosing your sub gun. And the added benefit to the gun you bring in is that it gets infinite ammo. Again, demo. We don't know how final this stuff is, but uh, the gun you choose is infinite ammo, so it pays to choose your favorite weapon to take in with you for that main purpose. Um, in a lot of ways, similar to other games of this type, the top-down, you know, bullet hell -y type, though this isn't really bullet hell, someone's just shmupping it. Um, there are multiple rooms you can enter, basically event rooms, as you declared previous rooms. The cookie room that Brooke mentioned, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head whether the cookies restored health or if they were a currency you took back to the hub which you would get after you clear the room of monsters. So okay. a chest would appear and that chest would have the cookies in it. Um, there were rooms where you could Fucking get a yeah. gun. Like they would advertise, if you go in this room, you're going to get a gun. Um, some rooms advertise walking in, getting a new um, accessory item that will modify your gameplay experience. And then one of the main ones is a room where you open it and there's a unicorn eating candy and playing with birthday presents. And at the center of the room is a pond with an egg in it. And the egg, when you take it back to your base, contains a baby Zolotol. Um, and then once oh you God. let the egg hatch, this is another case of, I think this is because it's a demo, uh, but you kind of have to feed it, but you can feed it all the servings in one shot. You can just go, bam, 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 eat this shit. And then the, it becomes a new <laughs> Zolotol with its own stats and perks. And then now you can choose a different one to run the levels with. You know what perks There's, me up, Purnell? <laughs> um, I'm going to assume it's some form of cheesesteak you just got. Yes, when I get cheesesteaks. Now, when That's we get right. subs, uh, Goyslop Games, thank you so much for dropping a sub. Oh, thank uh, you. Followed earlier tonight. So thank you so much for coming by, following, dropping a sub, hanging out for the giveaways. Love having you here. Hope to see you more. Uh, oh, my God, my cat's jumping on me. Pernell, take it away. When Hopefully next time, what? bring a cheesesteak. Bring a steak. It's <laughs> Philly Town, baby. Um, but, uh, this game, I will say, I didn't get into a ton of the idea of like, cause I know the stores all take dog biscuits as currency and my ass was getting itself wrecked. I feel like I got to maybe hub eight at the highest out of the rooms available, which means I never got to the boss and I never ended up with enough dog biscuits to buy anything. I didn't want to go hardcore on this because again, it's a demo. I'm not going to get to keep the stuff I acquired, but I did notice that you do get dog biscuits for certain kill accolades and from certain chests, which you can then take back after you die to make purchases in the hub. One of those purchases likely being the shop that sells the guns that populate the entrance way. But I will say that the game was enjoyable. I personally like the idea of cute animals being batshit bananas out in the jungle try or in the forest trying to take you out. It just adds this weird juxtaposition of like cute to violent that... I can strangely appreciate in games like this. Uh, I, so I do like that. I do like the music. I do like the tempo. I do wish the Zolotol's roll was a little bit of a faster pace. If there's a run button, please let me know because I want to be faster. I want to <laughs> guess there's probably an item that makes you faster, like the battery or something, but I'd like to be faster. But other than that, I would say the game was enjoyable. I would like to see what the final build is like. 
and well it's it's still a ways off we don't have a a set release date yet so we're not too sure when it's going to be coming out but should be should people be keeping an eye on this game is this something that that should go on people's steam wish lists oh for sure especially if you like the that one game that was out before called blazing beaks this is a game that carries that sort of adorableness with the added adage that you can acquire new characters that have their own stats with trade with swappable traits so yeah i would definitely say keep an eye out for this cool brooke your thoughts Yeah, for a demo especially, I think this game's really well made. All the sprites are adorable. The animation and the music is is on point. And I, you know, I've seen a lot of games, probably because I love cute animals, but like games, which also, which usually feature violence. A lot of video games are really violent. I don't know why. But I do think it has that juxtaposition of super cute characters coming to kill you. And it actually, I don't know how to say it, but they actually did a good job with that. Like, it doesn't feel contrived. Like, it feels kind of self-aware and, and... just cute and funny. Uh, I really loved Nuclear Throne. That's the only game I've really played uh, that's a lot like this. Um, I didn't get super far into the game. I did play a lot of it, but I, I think I got to room three. So uh, <laughs> Purnell got a lot further than me. I did want to ask Purnell, there's a donut that the small pause dealer is selling, and I never had enough bones for it. Um, and it said you got to buy it to find out what it is. Did you get the donut? I did not get the donut. Dang. I I think my main and my main claim to fame was I unlocked like three different Zolotals, and that was That's like, cool. yay! I did a few. I got a few. I didn't even um, know you could do that. You started talking about the unicorn and the egg, and I was like, whoa! And now y'all know why I wrote such a, a long intro because I was like, I didn't get super far in it, but what I played, I did like. The game. I mean, from the very start, the game doesn't screw around. They they come and they come for the throat from the very beginning. So yeah. All right, well, speaking of games with really good visuals, the next game to talk about is Grim Grimoire Once More, developed by Vanillaware and Nipponichi Software, published by Nis America, released April 4th on Switch, PS4, and PS5 for $49.99. Join aspiring mage Lilith Blan on her journey with, <laughs> within the Silver Star Tower, a renowned academy for magicians. All is not what it seems inside the tower walls. Mysteries, monsters, and menaces lurk about. Harness the power of magic to dispel the secret hidden within the tower and discover the truth of the silver star tower tim what is going on in grim grimoire once more all right spoilers no i'm not gonna thing all right come on now (laughs) um so yeah grim grimoire once more which is a great name for a remake re-release uh in my opinion um it was a, a late ps2 game 2007 after most everyone had moved on to uh more higher more higher, higher <laughs> definition consoles. Uh, you know, I had, uh, I guess I'd only had my 360 for like maybe like six months when this came out. But anyways, yeah, so it, it was after the PS3 was out. Um, you know, NIS published Vanillaware games. So I always felt like this game didn't really get all that much attention um, at the time it came out. You know, everyone was looking at, at the newer consoles, uh, even though there was still good shit coming out on the old ones. Um, so I'm glad this game's getting a remake, uh, got this remake so that more people can check it out. So this game is a, it's a, is, so it's a vanilla, it's a vanillaware game. So guess what? It looks great. Um, <laughs> just has just amazingly drawn, uh, characters, uh, in, 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 in a world that it just looks fantastic. Uh, it's, it's what you would have come to expect from this company and their games. Uh, their art is just top notch. Uh, and and looks great, you know, shined up for modern consoles. Uh, this game is unique, um, unique. because unique. it, yeah, it's a it's a real time strategy game um, that is actually it, it's it's weird because I I enjoy RTS games, uh, but that generally they are played on a PC with a mouse and a keyboard. Um, And they take place from like an overhead perspective and you're controlling your armies going this way and that. Uh, And this game is not that. This game was designed for consoles. Uh, You are taking a uh, like a sideways uh, vertical slice view of this, uh, um, you know, the Silver Star Academy, which is, you know, Hogwarts, but not as transphobic Um, (laughs) and, and, and what have you. Uh, So, yeah, it's just, you know, stairs and books and hallways and uh, really the backgrounds can get like a little bit repetitive. So let's not worry about that too much. But it's it's all about the action of what the characters are doing. Um, 
But yeah, characters, you know, they go upstairs to change levels, to go to different floors and walk down hallways. Um, and there will be like pillars in the way that you have to go around. Uh, and it's just, it's just interesting. It, it is not the way these games usually feel like, because usually anytime you're getting an RTS on console, um, you know, there, well, you get your Starcraft 64, but you get your Command and Conquers and stuff. There, there was like a, a rash of trying to port over RTS games to console uh, in the 360 era. And it's just, you know, sometimes they work okay. Um, Halo Wars was also designed for console, but, uh, you know, took that kind of familiar PC view and just, just felt like awkward to me. And this always just felt better, like, and, and more suited to um, the format. Um, it also helps, you know, you have these big, beautiful sprites that really pop on the screen, so it's very easy to read. They, they did a lot of smart stuff with this game to make it uh, playable and palatable, uh, like, on a TV screen from your couch uh, that, uh, you know, deserves recognition. And so, yeah, we've updated the game to uh, 2023 here. Uh, you got lots of good, the, the control options are good for being able to uh, like select groups of characters, select types of characters to you know kind of pause the action for a second and cycle through. That all feels very doable um, and, and bossing them around. I don't like the action doesn't take place at a pace where you need a Korean Starcraft pro level of uh, <laughs> of you know keyboard strokes per second um, to to play this game. It, it is more chill than that. Uh, and, you know, the way it plays out, so you have, you know, a different schools of magic, uh, glamour, alchemy, necromancy, and sorcery, which give you access to different units, like each school of magic has different, like, portals that you'll, they're ostensibly, you know, your buildings, uh, that you'll create on the field that let you summon different units, Different units have different abilities, different strengths and weaknesses. You'll need to, like, every school has kind of, like, its base, like, peon-level uh, resource collector that you need to send to a, a, a crystal to collect magic. Um, and, yeah, the, there's, like, a... <laughs> there's, of course, like, a rock, paper, scissors thing going on with the units where, um, you know, it's like there's, there's ghosts that can't be hit by physical attacks, but they're susceptible to other things, or they can't hit other units. Um, or they're more susceptible to necromancy or what have you. And, and it's not necessarily pigeonholed to like, well, this school beats that school, this school beats that school. It's it's a little more dynamic and, and nuanced than that. Um, but, you know, all the, the units just like look really cool uh, and, and really pop on the screen. Um, all of this uh, wouldn't really matter, uh, but they went and they added a fa- an easy fast forward button to the game. Um, Because I remember playing this game back in 2007, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. But it was undoubtedly uh, a bit slow, just like waiting for your dudes to draw, you know, to collect resources, telling uh, a party of characters to go investigate over in this corner of the map. And I just do not think that would fly uh, on a modern console like that pace. Um, But fortunately, when you're giving out orders, you can just hold down a button and fast forward stuff. Uh, And that's great. Um, and, and that's really, <laughs> that, that's really key to making this a game that people will probably want to, or, or should want to dive into, uh, if, if it's catching their interest. Uh, the tutorials at the beginning of the game, I will say, are a bit exhaustive, they're a bit over explainy and that it's like, okay, yeah, I get it, I know, you don't have to, like, explain every single part of pick this unit, tell it to do that every single time, but once you get past that... Uh, The story of the game has, like, a bit of a, like, Groundhog's Day format to it, Um, and you're going through the same days over and over again, trying to sort out what's going on in the Academy. Um, But yeah, it's a a cool game. It is a a game that I feel like was kind of forgotten, Uh, and it, you know, still looks great and I think has uh, an interesting play style, even, like... (laughs) over 15 years later now well the game's clocking in at 50 bucks what are your thoughts on it yeah it's i think some people might want to wait for sale but you know it (laughs) is it is just an updated ps2 game but no it it, it is worth your dollars it is not it it is a cool fun game uh especially if you miss it the first time around 
especially if you missed the first time around, especially if you're looking for an RTS, like something a little bit different an RTS to play on console. Um, if you're looking to fill in gaps in your vanillaware collection, which you know you always should be because they're they're such great games. Um, it's it's kind of the forgotten one, you know, between Odin Sphere and and Muramasa, uh, just kind of like dropped in there and then was never heard of again till now. So yeah, it's it's worth it. Uh, you'll you'll get your time out of it for sure, uh, and and your money's worth. Cool, sounds good. All right, next up is Sushi Bar Express, developed by NYX Digital, published by Funbox Media, released March twenty third on Switch and Steam for twenty nine ninety nine. Experience the dizzying life of a top sushi sushi chef as you prepare sushi dishes. Oh my god, I can't talk tonight. And this exciting yeah, time sense. management cooking adventure. Brooke, what is going on in Sushi Bar Express? Hey, in this game, you're a sushi chef. What's your name? What's your story? I don't know. They don't tell you, but you jump right into another classic Switch game that absolutely only works touchscreen, uh, but at no point in the tutorial <laughs> tells you that. So you heard it from me first. Touchscreen only for this one. Will I just, I just want to point, I love that this is back-to-back weeks that you're covering cooking games. A food-related so. game? Yeah. yeah so. we, was- we need a, a name for the set, like Brooks Cooks. <laughs> let's uh let's work let's workshop it i got some ideas but yeah i asked this is from the the batch of cooking games i asked you for joe or i think this was like su- sort of like that i was just like give me all the cooking games a few weeks ago. <laughs> uh, and this one came through we reviewed blocky farm a couple weeks ago you may recall and now that's a good example of a cheap little little mobile game that was ported to switch that was designed for the phone uh so og version touchscreen only but understood that when porting to a switch for some players are going to assume that they can't play it on the tv with a controller instead of a touchscreen they didn't have to give us the option to play with the controller but they did and they did as smooth and as good of a job as humanly possible especially as you can if you can expect with a cute mobile game coming to switch i appreciate them for that because game recognized game but mostly i appreciate that it's just clear early on like from the uh the store onward like i feel like players need to know um before you buy it how are you gonna play it but anyway uh you stand behind a sushi bar there's an array of fish and tamago slash egg and squid and stuff you can choose from customer orders shrimp sashimi or nigiri or whatever that's supposed to be on the screen you tap to select it it now appears on the cutting board you tap it a few times to cut it up and then you tap it uh the ghost plate where it's supposed to go What's a ghost plate? Don't get scared, Purnell. Uh, ghosts aren't real. That's just what I call <laughs> the plates that are on the bottom of the screen. I actually cho- I, I rolled a dice and chose your names at random, so I don't think Purnell's scared of ghosts. <laughs> but I hope he is. Uh, so they show what you need. <laughs> they show what you need on the plate. Uh, only, they're translucent until you fill up the different components of the plate, and then they, you know, you don't see through them anymore. Once you fill up the plate with the seafood of their choice, you'll also add wasabi by just touching the wasabi icon at the top. Or some hot tea or sake by touching either of those icons until the dish is complete. While you assemble stuff, floating coins with wings slowly go across the screen at times. You can tap these coins to collect them if you notice them in time before they fly away. And once all the ghost plates have become real boys, the level is over. And we hear a lot of arcade-style noises that are suddenly very loud compared to what was going on before sound (laughs) design-wise. It does make you wait forever in between levels while it very slowly counts your points slash money with arcade money sounds. Uh, You can't skip through it. And it kind of feels like it does that a lot because uh, the game doesn't have a whole lot else going on. Then you move on to a new level in the map. Your little face icon goes to the next pebble on the map, and sometimes small things change in between levels to slightly spice it up, but uh, that's pretty much the game. The game can be slightly challenging at times if you have a lot of orders, but not in uh, an incredibly rewarding way. Uh, Sorry to say that feels good to pull off or seems to matter a lot. Uh, You can make a ton of mistakes and still get the high score title of Master during levels. Um... Add an, I feel like they could add another tier for perfect, just so you had something to shoot for there. Um, but that is their choice. Uh, so Master feels a little empty, but you'll at least make some mistakes at first, uh, regardless of whether the game is difficult to you or not. And once you do, your two bosses, favorite part of the game, by the way, your two bosses, the old man to your left and the old lady on the right, who are always hovering over you, yet doing nothing. A couple regular Christines <laughs> up in here. Uh, well, you, when you mess anything up, they will hit you on the head really hard, and then you won't be able to move for a couple seconds as sparks fly around your dizzy, hurt head, and then they, they laugh at you. For, that you doesn't know, sound idiot. like it's helping the problem. That sounds dude. counterproductive. <laughs> and they it's laugh like at you, a, dude. It sounds like a couple of Kasims to me. Yeah. Oh, my God. Thanks for catching that. Fucking uh, Kasim. <laughs> Kasim is back. 
with a hideous, they have a hideous high pitched cackle, unlike Asim, which for all his fault, he has a beautiful voice. Uh, but yeah, they laugh uh, when they hit you and it's, and it's pretty funny. Um, but before I, I did feel even that was a little bit empty, but before I go too much into complaining, uh, maybe we'd go into the rating. All right, well, it's I, I was a little wrong in my info. It's twenty nine ninety nine on the Switch, twenty four ninety nine on Steam. I have a feeling that five dollars doesn't make much of a difference. But what are your thoughts on this game? So uh, I'm gonna slow roll this one. So as I played this, I pretty quickly realized this was probably gonna have to be a deny it for me. Uh, but I kept playing and tried to keep an open mind. I started to get a little bit bummed out because I hate giving games a deny it. I truly hate it. If you listen, to oh, you me need to embrace the hate. On the show. I need to embrace it, man. <laughs> I need side. you to become my Hold hate you. mentor. We're gonna talk about this because uh, this was this is emotionally difficult for me. It became pretty clear to me early on this was probably a clear deny it. But I made myself get much further into the game to give it a fair judgment. All the while, assuming they were probably not asking more than. 99 cents for this game maybe 2.99 i was considering giving it a try <laughs> oh, no. it, i was considering giving it a try it if it ended up being 99 cents uh but maybe a deny it if it was more like 2.99 when i looked up the price uh which i mostly only like to do if i don't know the price after i played the game a fair amount um if it just came from joe and i didn't necessarily pick it out i think i had asked for a sushi game and, and i got a different one which was cool it looks like they're about the same but yeah when i looked at the price i couldn't believe it 29.99 uh when i give a deny it hurts my feelings because i typically love even garbage i'm here because i'll play any atoma game no questions asked <laughs> hello uh anyway i really love almost all games where the devs had a vision and, and put some heart into it uh or even gave us like a, a a new idea uh and puffy you know this i thought hard about what could make this game worth a cool 30 i thought maybe this is a popular mobile game like blocky farm which for some reason is on the phone and has maybe it has a ton of in-app purchases and maybe there's a community of people who are hooked on this game who would like a cheaper option but you know maybe all the, the in-app purchases build in and then I looked up the game, and I researched it pretty hard to make sure this wasn't ever a mobile game, uh, This, uh, which is sad for the price, but it also kind of makes me sad because it makes that whole, like, touch screen only but didn't tell us complaint a little bit rougher because I've only ever seen that happen with mobile ports. So it hurts me, but I don't know what to say. I think at a much lower price point, we could justify the accessible for all ages angle that they talk about in the Switch shop, um, but I don't see even buying this for a young kid for $30 or $24.99, either, either one. I think there are better options for your money at this price point. But the good news is if you want to talk about some quality games for little kids that are mad, mad accessible, lots going on at a medium-ish price point like this that actually delivers a lot of quality assets, especially considering it's for kids. You can tune in next week for me covering the new Bratz, Flaunt Your Fashion Game, and My Little Pony, A Maritime Adventure. And Chris will Very be talking nice. about Gigantosaurus kart racing, too. Oh, and yeah. all of them. They're all from OG games. And you want to know uh, the best part? Jacob time. will probably be here to chime in. Yes. I, what, was Good he, was news he for MLP? all. Thank goodness. He, he's played was them all. Oh, that's cool. Okay. I kind of want to talk to him about. He is the OG OG. Oh, my God. If he has played Bratz, I may be changed in this review because I already have a lot of the Bratz review written. Uh, no spoilers, but I will be presenting this as a period piece and we'll be talking about the 90s. So <laughs> that'll be a good time. It's going to get it's going to get interesting. But yeah, uh, didn't really love this one, but the can will be winners. Um, yeah. and I'm still down to cover any cooking game anytime. No questions asked. All right. Well, we'll hear more from you next week. Uh, did, were were you going to stick around tonight and see if Tim embraces the hate, or were you going to head out? I actually wanted to hear the next one, so I'm going to mute and kind of listen while I cook my dinner, uh, and then I will disappear like a phantom randomly, like I did last week. So I'll say goodnight for now. I uh, I was just workshopping brookware, like cookware or Ooh, software. I like that. Okay, brookware. I really love that. I was hooked on Cooking Mama but with Brooke, but I couldn't figure Brooking out a way to make Mama. it. Like <laughs> Brooking Mama, Brooking Mama Brooking is Mama. pretty cool. Oh, man. <laughs> good, too. This is like that way you could always say, what do you think of this game? Better than Mama. <laughs> okay, You're I like not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I like how y'all thinking. This is cool. Oh, my God. Well, I'll anyway. say good night and disappear later. So good night Nighty for night. now, y'all. Night. Later, buddy. All right, next game is Curse of the Sea Rats, developed by Patoon Studio, published by P-Cube Limited, released April 6th on Xbox One, Series X and S, Switch, PS4, PS5, and PC for $19.99. I believe I've seen varying prices for this, but the Switch digital price is $19.99. I'm going to assume it's the same across all platforms. Physical, I believe, is $39.99. 
Anyway, embark on an epic hand-animated Ratroidvania adventure where your crew has been turned into rats by a pirate witch. Explore a rich non-linear world, enjoy fun action platforming, face challenging bosses, and unlock unique abilities either alone or in local co-op. Tim, tell us about your time with Curse of the Sea Rats. Oh, man. Oh, what a curse it is. Uh, yes, rat, ratroid, uh, Brooke <laughs> saying in our, in our chat. No, no, My not so good. <laughs> um, yeah, this game made me mad real fast. Oh, uh, no. all right. So this is, you know, this Joe, I was like bitching about this game to you after I'd been playing I, it for I'm like trying an hour. To, I'm trying to play it up oh, for I'm the show. Notes. Yeah, he's, he's like surprised. <laughs> and, and Gads, my, E-Gads, I have no clue what the outcome this, of this, this review, review will be. Next week. Because the pricing, and I was like, Joe, let's just get this over with. No amount of money is going to get me to recommend this game. Um, maybe there is like a Her small apologies to P Cube right off the bat. But hey, let's yo, hear about the know, game. <laughs> let me tell you, I'm not the only one who who has beef with this game uh, on the no? internet reviewing community. Uh-huh. Um, but we, we'll start off with the good. So this game uh, is it's so yeah, it's fucking Ratroidvania. <laughs> It's a Metroidvania game where you're rats. Um, you are some characters who have been cursed uh, to become rats by a pirate queen on this ship. And, and the Admiral uh, commissions you to redeem yourselves by going onto the island to rescue his son uh, and hopefully undo this curse. But yeah, everyone's a rat. Everyone's a rat person. Um, like all your characters that were captured or are on this prison ship, they all have some kind of redeemable... Yeah backstory what up are, are we are we talking about like rats what are like the size of rats and they're walking around like humans or are we talking like uh capital critters type of nonsense i believe they are wonderful rats. Rats. oh thank you um, for now yeah. i am old <laughs> uh, I believe they, both yeah. and i was watching tv during the two weeks that capital critters was on the air <laughs> 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 Yeah, they're they're rat sized rats. It's it's not important. Okay. Uh, you the the animation for your characters, uh, like the characters that you play as and the enemy characters in the world is extremely good. Uh, that is clearly the selling point of the game. Um, and which is why I looked at it. I'm like, well, it's not ringing any of my usual alarm bells. It just it has very nice animations for the characters uh the the bosses the 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 you know the random enemy mobs in the world uh all look very good well animated but yeah especially you know like the main characters and bosses look just looks great uh the backgrounds are fine um they're functional uh they are not anything incredible to write home about um the music is also not that great notable very notable. Um, but you have uh, four different characters that you can pick uh, right off the rip. Uh, don't get too bogged down with which one to pick because you can switch between them freely uh, at certain points in the game and eventually at any point in the game. Uh, and they have different backstories. Uh, there, there's one who is like a revolutionary war rat. There is Native American rat. There is Far East Japan rat. And then there is a big beefy rat who's just like a buff guy who punches things. Um, uh, They have different stats. They each have their own skill tree, which is cool. Uh, They even, you know, skill tree aside uh, and different stats aside, they have different move sets. So that stands out. They will eventually get different magic. The magic is pretty similar to one another. It's just like, hey, projectile, there it goes. Um, That that's all pretty similar. Some sums will come out. Some characters will come out faster or slower depending on on which one you're you're playing as. Um, the game is a uh, turns out it is a little bit souls like. This is not explained. Uh, when you die, you drop some portion of the spirit energy you've collected where you died. Um, I only figured this out because obviously I'm lousy with those games and I just recognize immediately what's going on. I'm just like, oh, yeah, I lost a bunch of my stuff. And, oh, there's a little marker on the map that where I died. I bet you there's a thing there and I get it all back. And, oh, yes, you do. Uh, you do. You also collect gold, which is separate from your kind of stat boosting currency. Uh, and you can use in a shop that is towards the beginning of the game um, and could be a little bit closer to a fast travel point. There are fast travel points that you have to pay to unlock uh... when you get to them. Uh yeah, that's terrible. Change that immediately. Just have them open. There was 
one where I was, you know, deep down in a cave right before what ended up being, I was just moving along. I found, you know, the teleportation spot. I did not have enough currency to unlock it because I had just spent a bunch on upgrades for my character. Um, and then I went a couple more rooms down and like, I was like, oh, this is a boss room because, you know, it's red and has a little sword in it. And I was like, oh, well, crap, I need to walk back and grind a little bit to unlock this teleporter. Just ha- just have the fast travels. Like, what are you doing here? That's yeah. absurd. Um, yeah. Uh, so actually playing the game is ranges from like fine to uh annoying to downright uh motherfucking frustrating um (laughs) depending on what's going on it seemed like like so i i do think this game may be more balanced for four players or or at least more than one player because it does does support four player co-op which is four player co-op on the same screen and that is cool um but i i'm a solo dolo player or playing with someone who is a kind of useless at cooperative video games for the most part um, at this stage in his life, he's getting there, but he's not there yet. Uh, so it just felt like, man, these enemies are taking off a lot of health. Um, I'm not always like there's some smaller enemies like crabs and like <laughs> fucking like clams that will jump at you that like always got me. The clams always got me because I would never see them before they would jump at me. Uh, sometimes I would just like walk into a crab because they just didn't pop off the screen enough for me to like notice like, oh, there's a crab there. Uh just like annoying um and you just you can't take a whole lot of hits before you're dead and being dragged back to the you know the last bonfire equivalent uh that you uh that you happen to touch um and there is no kind of steady health restoration option you can buy health items uh from the shop or you can find them in the world uh but those go quick and usually i'd save them for boss fights um, uh, the, yeah, there, there, there's, like I mentioned, there's a bonfire type equivalent, which is like your checkpoint restores your health. You can spend, uh, points on your skill tree. The skill tree is good. It's different from each character. Like I said, you're getting, uh, stat upgrades, uh, upgrading. You're not really unlocking like abilities per se, but it, it, they are meaningful upgrades in the end, kind of the difference uh, that you're making. And they're making the characters play differently and focus on different things like, uh, you know, they'll always crit from behind or, uh, you know, range attacks do this, that, or the other thing. Um, one of the things that, like, really set me off, uh, so there, there are side quests in this game uh, that you can complete for rewards, question mark. So I did one, uh, which involved finding uh, a key to open a cage that contained some guys who swore they weren't pirates. They were just caught up in this whole thing. Um, so you had to distract a, a dog that was guarding them. And I'm like, well, I have the bone for the dog. Like, let's do this. Uh, even though these guys seem shady, I want to see what happens. So I unlock the thing, and of course they beat me up, and they take all of the gold that I accrued to that point in the game, and it was gone, down to zero. All of it. Like, 1,500 gold, which seems like a decent amount. Just gone, out of nowhere! And and then, so it's like the next time... Uh, well, the, so then I like mad walked out of that room, then immediately died because there was like a rat there, like threw a bomb at me. And then I'm like back at the checkpoint and then the little like, uh, you know, ghost like Kung Fu master that comes out of it and talks to you like it talks me and just like, oh, man, I'm going to just go away until I, you know, I'm stuck with you because you suck. I'm just like, go oh, fuck yourself. I'm already <laughs> mad. But then the next time I came up on a side quest. And the guy's like, oh, can you go get me this, this, and this? I'm just like, no, I don't want to do that. You might take all my money out of nowhere. Like, how am I supposed to know? I'm just going to ignore all this extra content in the game. Oh, uh, Yeah, that would turn a, me off from doing side quests. Oh, it was a big turn off, like, right away. Um, getting around the map can be a bit of a chore. Like, those aforementioned, like, pay-to-play fast travel points are not too plentiful uh and it's not always clear like where you have to go which is you know good and bad it can be you know i don't want to be led by the nose everywhere but it was just kind of like poke around like well i got this key so i guess i'll go here and i'll go in this direction and da 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 da. (laughs) that's fine um but it's just it's just like not quick getting around and you have to be careful because enemies can take you out really quick um a lot of things some things with just like the movement of your character 
just didn't feel right. And I think that's partially because they have such rich animations that you have to wait for an animation to complete before you can do the next input. Um, I, there was just like issues where it looked like a ledge should be something I should be able to jump up and grab onto. Uh, and I could not, uh, there, (laughs) I was losing my mind, uh, during a (laughs) boss fight because like my character, I was trying to like stop and duck and they just kept running. And I'm like, what is going on? I am not like doing like, what is going on with the inputs? And what I figured out is that like to duck, you have to make a, you have to go like full neutral on the stick and then press down. Otherwise your character just keeps running. Um, so if you go from like running, if you're like holding right to run and then you rotate to down to duck, the character's just going to keep running, not going to duck. Like, and that is just not, that doesn't feel right to me. That's not how I'm used to input behaving in this type of game. Uh, and it was, super frustrating um which is on top you know the character just taking time to like like very specifically you know you have to like stop and then push in the other direction for your character to turn around so i'd end up like attacking in the wrong direction um it's weird and and you know just doesn't feel good there are you know uh Definitely high spots of the game. Like I said, the animation, like the boss fights are like decent. Um, There's nothing like too crazy about them, but the actual, like, you know, the (laughs) just the kind of the loop of how the systems of the game work uh, did not feel great to me. Um, The movement of your characters did not, you know, has issues uh, and just kind of hopping and bopping around the world is like it's solid at best despite them having like some a seemingly decent foundation with the skill tree and the different characters but there's like some lack of explanation on kind of important points and then there's some things that I just don't think are very great and then there's some things that I think they could fix or make yeah. better easily um but yeah. I truly felt cursed by the sea rats <laughs> Well, you said uh, 1999 wasn't really worth it. If if that is the proper price on all platforms, what would be I worth this game? What would what I don't would know. Be worth it? It, it, I, I guess you know. It, uh, I wouldn't. What could they do to improve it besides well, I, making the the fast travel? Fix points? all that shit I just mentioned. Okay, uh, fair enough. I mean, like the the, <laughs> the way the control inputs work is like a biggie. Uh, balancing it more for single player uh, is a biggie. Um, like, you know, you should, enemies should be scaling to the amount of players you have, right? Yeah. That makes yes. sense. Uh, not taking all of my motherfucking money. That sucks. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'll, there, there's, there's a solid base here that, that just, I think needs some, some straightening out and, you know, any game these days can get there, but this game is not there at the moment. So I could not be recommending of it to you fair player and i meant i talked last week about kind of the saturation of the metroidvania genre and how like you really got a bang to uh you gotta bring it these days you you gotta bring it to stand out from the crowd uh and this is this is in the crowd for sure all right well if nothing else props to platoon studio for doing something outside of their normal wheelhouse their previous games have been two peppa pig games pj masks and brats so wow, they, they I believe this came out, out of a that. Kickstarter. I believe they kickstarted this. Ah. Uh, so so props for shipping your Kickstarter game. Yeah, true. Sure. All right. Well, Tim, that's it for you. Yeah. Any, oh. any final thoughts? Final words? I, I don't. I'm empty this week. I didn't think of something to recommend to uh, to Chris. I didn't think. <laughs> of, uh, Aww, that's okay. Sorry, I didn't last week either. But I just kind of like left because I I had to go and. Uh, uh yeah, Pernell covered it for week. you. All right. Good job, Pernell. All right. Hey, Catch our here for later. fair player. I caught that. Uh, LOL, Dad. <laughs> All right. All right. Get any out. any final nope, words nope, then? Nothing. You're out. No, I'm out of here. Yep. All uh, right. Brooke, how's things on your end? You happy with that game? Sorry, which game? <laughs> Curse of the Sea Rats. You happy with that one? Oh, I mean, I was here for the puns, but you know, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the wise Tim's advice on this one and then probably pass. Sounds but I am good. very happy with Chef Life, which I'm somehow cooking, playing right now while I actually cook on the stove. So there's a mess in here. <laughs> That's why I had to run over and unmute and say hi. 
Double cooking. I'm going to try and hang out for the next one, too, but, you know. Cook while I cook like a cook while I cook. Well, we've only got three there. more, so you can stick around all night if you want. But next game to talk about is Xiao Mei and the Flame, Drag- Flame Dragon's Fist, developed <laughs> by Pixel you, Co. Wait, 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 wait. I just love that you got Xiao Mei just fine, but, but Flame stumbled Dragon. stumbled on Flame Dragon, yeah. was a challenge, yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't even sure if it was Zhao Mei. I just shot in the dark on that shit. Uh, no, yeah, that's pretty close, yeah. Zhao Mei and the Flame Dragon's Fist, developed by Pixel Co., published by Leo Fool, released March 31st on the Switch for $14.99. Zhao Mei and the Flame Dragon's Fist is a 16-bit kung fu action game that pays homage to the retro kung fu games from the 80s and 90s. You play as kung fu heroine Zhao Mei, who embarks on a journey to save her elder sister Zhao Yin from the evil influence... <laughs> Of the dark dragon, punch, kick, and unleash the flame dragon's fist, an enemy stopping you from saving your sister. Uh, Chris, did you fist the enemies? Boy, did I ever. <laughs> um, yeah, I believe it's uh, it's Xiao Mei, but um, and then actually, uh, Xiao Win, I uh, I had to look it up. So I did my best. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, no, it was fine. You quit. I'm done. I you, no, you got, it. I mean, you got <laughs> the vowel sounds were perfect. So, yay, yeah. Uh, okay, so shout me. Shout me. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that it is appropriate for this. Yes. Um, yeah, so this is a 16 bit style retro throwback type of game um, that basically, I mean, they, they say it's based on 80s and 90s kung fu games. I, I could narrow it down a little bit further than that. It is just kung fu on the NES, also known as Spartan X in, uh, in Japan. It is very much a uh, a game where you go from left to right and you use kicks and punches and occasionally jumps to ward off enemies that are uh, perpetually coming at you from uh, from you know both sides of the screen. Um, so if you're not familiar with Kung Fu, like that one, <laughs> Kung Fu is like one of my first NES games. I love that game. Yeah, me too. Actually, um, my favorite one of the first part- ones I beat too. Well, my favorite part was I found out if you paused it while Mr. X is laughing on the screen to it's like the before the level starts, you can uh-huh. just keep repeating his laugh over and over. Just pause, oh, unpause, that's funny. pause, unpause. That's he'll, great. Yeah, it pissed off my mom so much as a kid. <laughs> so it was like the it was like the Mega Man uh, glitch, uh, yeah. the Mega Man pause glitch, but for laughter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> That's perfect. I try. Um, <laughs> so, yes. So, basically, what you do is you have a kick button, you have a punch button, uh, you push up to jump, and it's uh, it's got a hair trigger on that jump, by the way. Um, so, I, I fortunately, if you jump, then, and you're already moving to the right, you do a little hop, and it's the same speed as running. So, yeah, you, know, you just run to the right, and occasionally you're hopping to the right, and you're like, all right, I can deal with this. Um, like I said, there's enemies that come at you at varying levels of AI. Uh, that is to say, most of the enemies just uh, run from the screen and then run into you, and that's it. Uh, they just try to stop you by physically hurling their their unmoving torsos uh, at you. And hug you know, of any death. player, yeah, hug of death. Any kung fu player knows what I'm talking about here. Um, of course they can be taken out three at a, you know, three, four, five, eleven hundred at a time with just like one kick, but still they're coming at you. And this game, uh, has the system where, um, if you get hit, you have no iframes. You can continually take damage until you're dead. So, um, if you, uh, run afoul of the hug of death and some other things are hitting you, they're, they're all going to do damage at you at the same time and you're going to die. And, uh, when you're going through the level part, Every death equals start the level over. Um, there is a limited amount of uh, lives that you can choose from the options menu, three, five, or seven. Uh, it kind of doesn't matter because if you get a game over, it just resets your score and you start at the same place anyway. So you can persistently make progress in this game as long as you can eventually clear the whole level on one life. Um, but the levels are just a scant one or two minutes long and uh, and then you're there at the boss fight. Uh, boss fights are... Uh, usually involves some kind of trick because uh, your character does not have very much health, um, but neither does the boss. So it's kind of like wait, waiting for a weakness and, you know, getting enough punches and kicks in there to maybe use your special move, which is uh, done with the Y button by default. 
Uh, so Xiaomei's, uh, you know, special move is a fireball kind of thing. And so it's a little bit of a Hadouken, but it's got a little dragon attached to it. It's pretty cute. It does a lot of damage, which is nice. Um, so yeah, you just do that and repeat that for uh, six or seven levels. And then after a bit of a boss rush, then you've completed the game, which I did. Uh, after you complete the game, you get to play through it as an unlocked second character, which uh, which is a uh, Shao Wen, and Shao Wen has the same kind of moves but a little bit different. Uh, this is one of the few games that I've played where um, when you unlock a second character to do a second playthrough, you know, usually they make it a little more challenging because that second character might have like a radically different gameplay style. Uh, well, Shao Wen, like, totally wrecks. <laughs> like, I beat I beat the game with, uh, with Shao Mei, and then again with Shao Wen in, like, uh, without getting a game over on the second Jeez. playthrough. Yeah, I just breezed through it with that second character. That's just easy mode? <laughs> yeah, and then the game does have variable difficulties, by the way, uh, but that does not affect your ability to win or unlock anything. It's simply the difficulty. Uh, it's on three levels. Uh, the game actually is very hard if you don't know how to do your classic kung fu thing. And that is to say, don't spend a lot of time just trying to clear the screen of enemies. Start running and just yeah. get them as you go by. And, um, you know, learn the boss patterns because the first boss is is absolutely a uh, a gateway. or It's like, you know, it's a, it's a wall to climb. Mm. Uh, but once you're over it, then all the rest of the bosses you kind of figure out and you're good to go on those. Um... Yeah, so ben, the the good points about this game, graphics are great, gameplay is real smooth. Like I said, I feel like the up button is a little too <laughs> activated at all times, but I ended up being able to beat the game with that. It's no problem. Um, and that's me playing with a pro controller, by the way. I didn't try any other kind of controller. Um, but, you know, I know the pro controller really well. That's like yeah. almost exclusively what I use. Uh, the difficulty, like I said, it's... It's pretty high um, if you're not used to this style of gameplay, but like I said, I did eventually beat this game twice. So, you know, it's not impossible. (laughs) Um, And, you know, if anything, once you do have that system down, the game's pretty short. Um, It is six levels and a little more than that amount of bosses. Um, And, you know, playing through it twice, I basically unlocked all but, like, two pieces of content, which I assume are locked behind the other difficulty levels. Um, but having said, it was a fun little romp, and uh, and I, I actually think this is a, a worthy successor to a pretty old fashioned classic. Nice. So, fifteen bucks on this one. What is your verdict? Fifteen bucks is a little hard, just due to the fact that it can be beaten twice within an hour. But uh, you know, it's fun enough, and you know, you may find yourself going back through and and playing it on the harder difficulties and stuff. Uh, really, yeah, it's just, it's a light content game, but it is solid for what it is, so if that's worth 15 bucks to you, then I say buy it. Um, you know, that's, it is, it's, it's worth it for what it is, so, there cool. you go. Is there a laugh in the game? Um, I don't think so. There's, it definitely doesn't repeat the laugh if you pause it. No, that's bullshit. There are, there, there is it. voice acting, though, in the game. Uh, each character does have, like, a, a sound bite that nice. they'll, they'll do. And, in fact, uh, Xiaomei's death thing is, like, and, like, it does get kind of annoying when you just keep dying because it's <laughs> only one. And uh, it's, I don't think there's a way to, like, change the the volume of it it's like yeah. I don't know. anyway it's fine that's not really a complaint that's just there is bgm volume and sfx volume so there's not like a separate one for uh for voice volume gotcha but, all right well moving on next game is lunark developed by canary games published by way forward release march 30th on xbox one series x and s switch ps4 ps5 and pc for 1999 a pixel art sci-fi adventure set in the midst of a rebellion against a totalitarian regime lunark is a modern take on the 2d cinematic platformer genre of the 90s run jump hang climb roll and shoot your way through gorgeous and mysterious locations Brunel, tell us about your time with lunark Lunark is a game that is very much on the love it or hate it spectrum out there at this point um the game graphically is very, very pixelated. And I've gone around looking at what people thought about it on the old internet. A lot of people seem to dislike it. And while I originally was kind of starting to ride that wave myself when I first booted the game up, 
by the time I went to the first area of the game that wasn't the default, so I guess that's technically the second area, um, the style of graphics actually kind of grew on me. I actually came to appreciate that graphical style, and the charm that it brings about came to light for me. Um, the other aspect of it being a love or hate style game is the fact that this game definitely plays a lot like games like Prince of Persia did on the Super Nintendo or Splashback, also on Super Nintendo or Genesis, in which your character does all the things Joe mentioned in the preamble, so I'm not going to say them all again, but they come with a certain stiffness of mobility, likely because they were trying to go for that exact same vibe. to like Blackthorn. I never played Blackthorn, actually, so oh. that plays like that, too. Yeah, it does. Wasn't that a Blizzard uh, game? It's a real early Blizzard game. I think when they were in their Silicon and Synapse years. Maybe I need to anyway. go look into that <laughs> game, too. Be perfectly honest with you, because uh, I got to play through it. Quick. I think it's on. Yeah, it is. It is in the Blizzard arcade collection. It is. And I have to play through the Super Nintendo version for the top 100 list. Nice. So. How's well, Lunark? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you like Blackthorn, then. Uh, but no, so the. I, the, the idea behind that is that if you don't come at this game with that level of nostalgia, you might find yourself in a bit of a bind. And it's funny that I make that exact comment because back when those games were new, mainly the ones I named, I didn't like them because I didn't get down with the stiffness of the controls. I tried to play Plants of Persia and I wanted to break my controller in half because it just wasn't clicking for me. And yet somehow, coming at this game, I decided I was going to approach it more as like, wonder if I can appreciate this now coming into this as a person knowing what I'm getting into, but with this graphical take on it. And the answer to that is I did get into it. Um, I won't go so far as to say that the narrative was really gripping me until the inevitable, you know, unexpected but totally expected twist came about where it became less a matter of, you know, you know, stopping the regime and more like payback's a bitch because I'm coming for you. Um, which is pretty much what happened. And pe once people get into the game and play it properly, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but despite me finding myself not particularly getting jumpy about what's going on with this narrative, I did find myself enjoying each new place in the game and traversing the environments to basically solve the environmental puzzles to get from point A to point B. I want to say my favorite area of the game was somewhere between. Uh, there's a level where you're riding a train that's moving and you're on the train, like pretty much trying to like run between from car to car. You're interacting with the different passengers and you got passengers that are on the train while people are firing guns and stuff left and right. And they're just looking at their mobile phones and their screens. And I have paid attention. And there's like this one specific element where once the security system is activated, uh, rocket launchers will start popping up off the map and they'll like kind of fire rockets at you. And at one room in particular, there's a scene where a guy is like playing on his cell, his phone while the rocket is shooting rockets across the room. And every time the rocket goes by, he goes, whoa, and he ducks and he gets back up. He starts playing with his phone again. And he ducks again when another rocket goes by. It was a weird little touch that I just noticed that made me smile and stare at it for a little bit before pressing on with the level proper. Uh, while you are moving around the level, you do come across various puzzle elements, like, you know, basically the items that you need to progress and unlock new items and in the inventory system in this game is pretty cake and straightforward in fact i'd go so far as to say that unless you're checking to see if you forgot to pick something up you will never you'll probably never need to access your inventory i pretty much never had to pause the game to look at the inventory i paused the game because i had to pause the actual game but if you're the type that easily forgets what your objective is pausing the game will give you that info as well as any items you've been carrying around collectibles in the game well I only want to say collectible so much as non-puzzle items that you can find in the game are shield cores. Um, shield cores are an item you can find that you can max out at three, which allows you to put up a wall that will block projectiles or melee damage in the event that's coming at you too. However, the shield shatters when it takes damage, and you can only use the shield when you are immobile. So... With that, plus the way this general, you know, this type of game stiffness is being permeated throughout the game, I found myself working harder to never need shields. I almost never used the shields because I wasn't dealing with that shit. I'd rather just do roll dodges and stuff to get out of the way. Um, you can find shells. Shells are pretty much a hidden item that you'll find across certain areas of the game where if you can find three, there's an NPC that generally exists within each of the main areas of the game you come across. And if you bring him three of those, he will, I quote, hug you. And by hugging you, he will give you an additional heart 
so you can take one more blow to to, to the temple before dying. Um, and then the last thing you can pick up as a collective or just a general item you can find are healing flowers. Healing flowers are growing out of the ground in specific areas of the game, which will allow you to eat them and recover one or all of your hearts, depending on the one that you find. You're going to die a lot in this game. <laughs> uh, partly because, <laughs> partly, all because of the controls. And I'm not saying that as an insult. I'm saying it because that is what the time, that's what the controls did during the time. And that's what the controls are going to do to you right now. Oops, I missed that running jump. <laughs> if only I did the time to jump button right or what have you. I've had more than my fair share of those. But when I do die, the game doesn't really penalize much. It sends you back a little ways. And but See, never here, so far. Here's the back. question I have. Is that bonus points for authenticity? to the genre and the time or is that negative points for still being clunky i'm going to go with bonus points for the time and i say that because of the fact that they they wore the influence on its sleep like it wasn't like they made a claim to say here's this game you like that well here we are but better than ever it's like no if you like these games we want you to play this like they are going for the style and i have no doubt that if they didn't want the controls to work this way they could have gotten away with it they could have easily pulled that off, but they decided to deliberately have you do the walk up and do X thing. And I'm not saying that as to say that it didn't bug me from time to time because there's one. Uh, you'll love this, Joe, because in a rare case, I attempted to get an achievement and I spent way longer than I needed to to do it. There's a level where you're in prison and uh, while you're inside the prison, you eventually have to escape because, of course, you do. And as you're running around the prison, you have to pretty much walk up on prison guards as they're not facing you and knock them out with your fist. But if they see you, they trigger the alarm. And of course, the achievement is to get through the prison sequence without triggering the alarm once. If the controls weren't as they are, that would have been a walk in the freaking park. No challenge at all. I can promise you that. But they designed the area knowing that. And suffice it to say, I had more than my fair share of moments where I was like, oh, I'm going to walk. Oh, crap, I walked one step too far. And the guy saw me like, yeah. Because I couldn't quite get the spacing right on punching the guy with the momentum the guy has when he's walking. And then the guards as they're walking away from you. So it took me more than my fair share of tries, though. I did eventually get it. And I'm happy because it was like one of those only 3% of the people who played this game pulled it off. I'm like, you damn right. No one's going to do this but me. Um, but it was fun to do, despite the frustration that came out of it. Uh, and... That is what ends up being the crux of what makes this game interesting to me, is the fact that, let's be blunt here, and you know this is for a fact, I could have easily stopped and said, the controls frustrate me, I'm not having fun, I quit. And that would have been my review, it would have been very valid of a review too. But instead, for some reason, I wanted to keep going. I was actually having fun. I was enjoying exploring the areas. I was enjoying getting over the wall to get to zone A. I was enjoying getting enough shells to get Hug to hug me and give me another heart. I did not understand how the hell Hug was getting to places before I was because he sits. I run and do all the things. So I found that funny. He's like, what are you doing in this area? I've got weird things to say. Also, give me three shells for a hug. Like, this dude. But anyway, I digress. I actually enjoyed my time with the game. It was a lot of fun to experience. I personally also enjoy the music the game has, too. I was a big fan of both the train music and the prison music. Do you like how I keep referencing the prison and the train? Get used to it, because prisons <laughs> and trains are my jam. Uh, I do like this game. I will go so far as to say, though, that I'm not going to tell you that the story is something to write home about. In fact... I barely cared about it. Towards the end, it becomes more of a thing that's of interest because, again, the aforementioned payback situation and also the stakes are finally presented to you as what they are. And I wasn't, I like the idea of, okay, time to wrap this bad boy up and see it to the to its inevitable conclusion. But even before I got entrenched in the narrative proper, I was just enjoying exploring the game and getting from point A to point B and seeing what area would I be exploring next. So with that in mind, I want to say this is one of those contingent bites because I'm saying this while trying to profess the fact that the controls are not going to come across as fluid because they're intentionally sort of retro stiff. And between the two of you, do you feel like I need to explain, give an example of how that stiffness applies or just now, I know that everybody exactly what you mean by it because I've played like Prince of Persia Classic and I've played Another World and I I'm familiar with that 
genre and i just worry that it might take the fun out of the game that's why i was asking if you feel it's more authentic or more hindrance i was i stand by that too i genuinely believe it's more authentic now don't get me wrong there are likely people who will play think hear what i'm saying and go i didn't like it then i don't like it now and that's fine i mean that's how these games work. Sometimes a game is meant to be to, to draw in the people that played the old games. Go, I like games like this, and I miss them. There was another game like that I played for this show a few years ago called like The Way Remastered that was similar to that. And also like that, I was like, you know, it's oofy, but it's clicking as I get into it because it kind of works. I don't know. Um, so with that in mind, I would even go so far as to say if you're not sure – Get it when it's on a pretty cheap sale and try it that way. That might be the thing that makes you go, you know, I can play games like this. It's not as big of a you know deal breaker as I thought it was, especially because, again, I didn't really have too many issues with the checkpoint system in the game either. So even when I did have that stupid jump and fail, except for the prison, where every time a guard saw me, I had to start the whole damn thing over because otherwise the achievement wouldn't count. But otherwise, I was fine with the checkpoints and everything. So Cool. All right, well, we got one final game to talk about tonight that is called Kana Quest, developed by Not Dead Design, published by Whitethorn Games, released March 28th on the Switch for $14.99. Are you sick of educational games that are glorified pop quizzes? Do you just want to play an awesome game and have a new real-world skill at the end of it? Do you want to learn how to read hiragana and katakana? Well, then, Kana Quest is for you. Chris, was it for you? Yeah, it's for me, because, um, you know, I'm kind of on again off again learning japanese so uh that's why i definitely wanted to try out this one and uh actually it is uh in good company on the switch too because there's another game called hiragana pixel party which is kind of a rhythm game that involves uh essentially memorizing kana to a rhythm which is uh kind of great so i'm all for it I, i love any kind of like engaging um thing like this that like helps you know teach you a skill uh and it does so this is a puzzle game uh, starring the the katakana hiragana symbols in a uh, <laughs> I don't want to say unique presentation. Um, basically, what you do distinct is, um, presentation. Distinct, yeah, it is a distinct presentation. That's accurate. <laughs> um, distinct. <laughs> no, I'm just that word's not abused, so we don't need to whisper it. Um. So yeah, basically what you do is on the board there's uh there are tiles arranged in a certain way and you get to move these tiles uh one block over at a time and what you want to do is get them all linked up and uh the way that they link is that each one is, you know, a katakana that will be like, you know, for instance, uh na and then let's say there's another tile that's ni. Well, if they are in close proximity together, they share a link. Uh, a little link appears between them, um, just kind of this arrow graphic. And uh, what that means is that they are linked by a common uh, sound, which is the the n consonant. But if you then have you know a knee and a key, then those are both linked too by the vowel sound. So. Since all katakana hiragana is basically a consonant sound and, and a vowel sound, you know, and th- that's the system that, by which they created that um, that that whole thing. Uh, that means that there's you know lots and lots of possibilities for different um, symbols to get linked together. And as the game progresses, you go through uh, 13 different worlds. Essentially, um, the backdrop just basically changes and the amount of stages is kind of random. It's anywhere between like nine and like 30 stages. So I I don't know how many stages there are total, but I can tell you it's like it's in the hundreds. Um, Jeez. Yeah. So there's a lot of puzzles in here. Um, Basically, every time that you uh, that you, you know, solve a few puzzles, then the next area is going to introduce new ways to interact with things. Um, And they just keep stacking up the complexity. But, you know, essentially what you are doing is linking together these um, these symbols by their their like sounds. Now, um, the way that, you know, you don't have to memorize them right off the bat uh, in order to play. Basically, the uh, the katakana or hiragana is written on the top of the tile. 
and if you double if you press a on it twice uh it's like double clicking it it'll flip it around and show you the the romanization of the uh of the sound so it'll say ni in english letters right so and you can flip anything on the board to to tell you that and um so of course that that gives you but you know it gives you a a site um a kind of site association because you know you then have to flip it around in order to move it you can't just flip them all around and, and start playing you have to, you flip it around look at it and be like oh, okay that's knee and then it flips back around you're like okay it's this and of course that's what trains your brain over time to be like oh this is actually what this is and um you know, in case you want to see like the whole thing, then they've uh, very nicely provided uh, the entire, um, you know, s- the whole set uh, in hiragana and katakana uh, for you to just look at. And it's on that kind of grid uh, that you might recognize from any attempt that you might have made to learn this language before. <laughs> um, they usually put it on a grid where it's like N sounds and then it goes down the, the list of vowels and then H sound and it goes down the list of vowels, things like that. Um so that's kind of what that's basically the game. Um, like I said, you can move these tiles around one at a time. You're trying to get them all linked together. Um, the different things that they throw at you is like uh, some tiles are immovable. So that's your basis for for shifting everything else. And you get rewards based on how few moves you can line everything up in so if you can get them all at all you get a bronze medal but if you do it like pretty well you get a silver medal and if you do it perfectly then you get a gold medal um so that's kind of cool because you know it's not super difficult because like i said as long as you can get it eventually then you at least pass the stage and get to move on and um the game was nice enough to have some accessibility features such as you could just straight up unlock every level in the game just from the options menu nice just tell it I just I just want all of the uh, want all of it enabled. Uh, they also have a dyslexic friendly font, and they also have a motion reduction thing, so you don't have to watch the tiles like sliding around. They just they move instantly, so that uh. you can get on with it <laughs> if you don't want to watch the animations. Uh, it also boasts a very healthy uh, list of different non English languages that also aren't Japanese. So you've got you know all kinds of folks can learn how to uh how to you know write in the japanese kana languages um not languages what am i saying you know (laughs) throughout through this game uh and yeah you can check out any level anytime if you just decide to unlock it or you can just play the game in regular mode and unlock it one at a time uh just like you would a normal game so yeah pretty cool oh sounds like a good package it's 14.99 what are your thoughts I mean, fourteen ninety nine is like half the price of most things that purport to teach you Japanese. So, and you get a game out of this one, so I don't see how that's not a buy it. <laughs> uh, I would say this pairs very well with Hiragana Pixel Party. I do recommend you also check that out if you're on a quest to learn uh, the language in a fun kind of passive way <laughs> while you're, you know, playing a fun game. Um, yeah, it's definitely a good game. It's uh, got a great little pixel art style, you know, great soundtrack. I mean, it's it's a winner all around. So yeah, it's, there's nothing that's gonna, nothing. I have no complaints. So that nice. nothing's stopping me from just saying by it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, that is it for this episode. I made it through another one. At Congratulations. Last. No, kidding. Yeah. Finally. God take it forever. Be- it's, it's before 11 my time. That's, that usually <laughs> means it was a pretty zippy show. Eh, it was almost two hours, but whatever. Close to an hour and a half, maybe hour 45. I don't know. Whatever. We'll see what editing does. But uh, thanks to you two for being here, hanging out. Thanks to Brooke and Tim coming on, doing their thing. Uh, Music this episode, we're going to play more Mustin because Mario Mixtape just released today as we're recording. It is out now. You can buy it on Bandcamp. Uh, You can get the CD on Bandcamp. It has a bonus song with it. So check that shit out. Uh, anyone have any final words to end the show? I will say I unexpectedly ended up pulling off a thing that I didn't realize when I went and bought a game the other day. It was called Fear and Hunger 2 Termina on Steam, because apparently the Steam Deck has me finding even more weird games. This game is pretty awesome, um, despite being ridiculously difficult in regards to you being in a like a town that's overrun by like this weird, I guess, curse with three days to get to a location and 
everyone in the town is losing their freaking marbles, and you got to pretty much like attack the other people that have joined the town. With basically, it's very Silent Hill Berserk esque. It's very creepy, but fun game. But the side effect for me buying that was, I guess I unlocked the the the, the I guess like the content warning on Steam. So now I'm like, wait a minute. There are a lot of violent and like like I guess like pornographic games on this system. So at oh, this yeah. point, it's like I had no freaking idea. Like Joe would have these things where it's like SML After Dark, and now I'm sitting there thinking like, no, there's actual After Dark games on this goddamn thing. I had they no really freaking are, idea. Did you not listen to Aki's SML After Dark reviews? Uh, no, I'm pleading a fifth on that one. Where's Aki? Get her back in here. <laughs> I be- no, I believe her. I just, I rather I believe you with her, but no, I had, I, the, never- I had the same, I had the same uh, react or like experience when uh, I s- had to like take off my like whatever it is, parental controls or whatever, to like <laughs> uh, look at some game that Joe was like asking about or s- something to do with this show. And once I did, I just left it off because I was like, I'm an adult. I don't care. You know, it opens a whole new world stuff. of possibilities. It, it really does. Yeah. And it gets everywhere. So it's it's I think it's funny. But yeah, it really does kind of like, oh, yeah. OK, so there's that much, huh? Yeah. Browsing <laughs> Steam and it's like, OK, Elden Ring, uh, Wilson, Peppa Pig. Oh, that's a butthole. Yeah. That <laughs> <doing on Steam? laughs> right right next to Peppa Pig. Yeah. So. Well, those were long <laughs> final words. Does anyone have any like quick, snappy final words to lead into a song? Oh, I, I'm I'm gonna say play uh, Squad Fifty One versus the Flying Saucers. Also, go to go see the Mario movie so we can compare Mario and Sonic in theaters in their modern iterations. <sighs> we gotta gotta bring up the old war, huh? <laughs> I got to. They probably <laughs> both have movies that were that have high production values. No excuses. Oh my involved. god, let's just end the show. 